show um people who keep asking about this weird mask i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> people were saying the same thing at the end of wolford mother loving worship they kept asking about a mask what are the masks i don't know what you're talking about what no one's wearing a mask you're a liar and an ass hat mark edward markiplier fishbach also known as the king of the squirrels the king of five nights at freddy's daddy apparently okay we're already wasting time if you're not one of mark's 36 million subscribers or one of his 21 billion views and have somehow been living under a rock on the internet here's a quick synopsis born in hawaii and raised in cincinnati ohio grew up to be an avid gamer later went to school for engineering dropped out had a lot of medical problems and eventually started doing let's plays on youtube slowly but surely he broadened his horizons with sketch comedy and narrative storytelling spawning popular characters like wilford warstash and darkiplier weaving them into the bigger and better projects such as who killed markiplier a heist with markiplier in space with markiplier and damien wait just damien o okay all right whatever heist in space where smash hit choose your own adventures adored by millions and the man the myth the markiplier is still making amazing things today a whole ass movie called iron lung should be coming out any day now which is a big deal theoretically it's a standalone project with actual movie studio level budget and production kind of like heist in space both helped in production by rooster teeth no there's no time as smaller but equally important projects continue such as three scary games go my favorite sports team distractable live streams and many many more there was also a thing he did with ethan crank gang plays nestor a few years ago that we do not talk about there really really isn't time. Mark continues to amass more and more fans, work on bigger and bigger projects, and everything is great and happy and FANTASTIC! Today's video essay, however, is not all great and happy and fantastic because I have had a lingering question in my mind for a long time. Who the hell are all these characters? The King of the Squirrels, the King of Five Nights at Freddy's, the Host, Dr. E. Plier, the Silver Shepherd, Google Plier, Bing, Bim Trimmer, Ed Edgar, Illinois, Captain Magnum, Yancey, and most importantly, Wilford Wharfstash and Darkiplier. And to a slightly lesser extent, Celine. And Abe the detective. And Mrs. Whitaker. Okay, there's no time! I've been working on this since just after Space came out, and originally it was to identify and document all the different paths you could take, the universes you could encounter, such as the puppet verse, the colonist continuity, the evil space, and the noir dimension, and plenty of others. But over time, I realized that's not all there is. Sure, plenty of people have made theories about what takes place when, between Wilford Mother Love and Wharfstash and a date with Markiplier, and Game Theory's Matt Pat, may he rest in peace, did some excellent work on what Wharfstash and Darkiplier's goals were. But today we are here to tie all of that together, the characters, the universes, the goals, the wishy-washy, wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey, everything, and hopefully nothing more super important comes out in the coming years, throwing a wrench into everything I've worked on so far because every tiny detail is important, but don't take my word for it. You're just too focused on the minutia of it. Well, joke's on you, bum-bum, because focusing on the minutia is what I do best! Quick side note, there might be some abrupt interruptions from me because I forgot to mention a few things and didn't want to rewrite the entire script. Now, we have a lot of ground to cover and not a lot of time, so here's a list of every single single piece of content we'll be covering no matter how little of it we use. <sighs> Who killed Markiplier? Damien, Wilford Mother Love and Warp Stash, Markiplier TV, Date with Markiplier, Heist with Markiplier, Space with Markiplier, The Fall of Slenderman, Five Nights at Freddy's, The Interview, Warp Stash Interviews, Markiplier, The Warp Stash Affair, The Net Affair, Darkiplier vs. Empty Sector Guy, The Breakdowns, Bloopers, and Behind the Scenes for as many of those videos that exist, Danger of Fiction, Worst News, Doctor Super Infidelity, Google IRL, Google Gets an Upgrade, Hire My Ass, and Ed Edgar, Top the Lots, Baby Bulk Pie! One take! Holy sh! And for those of you who haven't seen any of that, go watch it. Mark is a fucking amazing storyteller, a fantastic filmmaker, a master of horror. He's great. He's awesome. I love him. I want to meet him someday. And go watch his stuff! But also, if you need a quick recap, this is your last call for spoilers. I promise it's all worth watching. Who killed Mark? Mark, the character, also known as the actor, previously had a tremendous acting career and massive success with YouTube. He married a girl named Celine, brother of Damien, Mark's childhood friend. Eventually, Mark's other childhood friend, William, wooed Celine into divorcing Mark and marrying him instead. Mark went down a depressive spiral, probably killed himself, but soon realized he couldn't die. Literally, the house he had lived in for so long was cursed in such a way that death didn't mean the same thing for those who entered, or those who left. This is all backstory, of course. The videos start with Mark calling all of his old friends back to settle bad blood. William, now a colonel, Damien, now the mayor, and his detective friend Abe, also a butler and a chef are here, and a groundskeeper. Celine comes in later. We eventually find out that the curse of that house isn't just a curse, but an entity that seeps into Mark's mind, making him think he devised a plan to frame the man who stole his wife from murdering him. The next morning, Mark is dead! Everyone tries to find out who done it. Fingers are pointed, guns are shot, and lifelong characters are born. But the most important thing to take away is the house always wins. 
Wilford Mother Love and Wharfstash. The detective catches up with William, now going by Wilford Wharfstash after the events of Who Killed Markiplier. Words are spoken, fourth walls are broken, and the three men I admired most, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Wait, hang on, that's not right. Cool shit happens. Damien. Also takes place after Who Done It. Celine and, for some reason, Damien are stuck in a metaphor and have a foreshadow to the simile. I don't know. A lot of these are meta. I told you it's easier to watch the shows than to have me explain them. Date, Heist, and Space are all choose your own adventures about each of those with Markiplier, and everything else is more or less just sketch comedy. Now you may be wondering what makes me qualified to talk about all of the lore in these videos. Well, I spent months of my life taking notes on every single one of these, scraped every inch of every frame of every single project, top to bottom, and I watched all 10 minutes of Markiplier scrape the floor with a goddamn spoon. <laughs> Luckily, there's a few things we can knock out right off the bat. During a breakdown live stream titled Why Killed Markiplier, Mark said, It, it goes, who killed Markiplier? Wolford Wharfstash, Damien, Markiplier TV! Which makes sense. In Who Killed Markiplier, you see the birth of Wharfstash and Darkiplier. And Wharfstash is mother loving, and while it could be argued that Darkiplier isn't technically in Damien, again, during Why Killed Markiplier, Mark said, Him going through this summary is proof of his crime. Meaning, who killed Markiplier has already happened, and because of that... Celine, she's going out every night to hunt for actor Mark. She's not going out there just to watch guard. No, she's going to, she, she's going to fucking kill him. I don't know about you, but when I heard about that fact, my mind was fucking blown. Now, you might be reluctant to trust Mark on camera with the possibility of anything being actor Mark potentially trying to mislead us, but I'm not, because the implications of this being the truth lead to a much more interesting outcome in the end. Also, this order can be corroborated with Damien and Mother Loving happening at roughly the same time. You want two people! So many people! And Wharfstash saying, I wonder what he's up to. Yes, which is Damien, by the way. Yes, that's Damien's picture. Which perfectly leads into... More stuff comes in like, Oh, there you are, Damien. I've been looking all over for you. Cut to MTV. Ew, is that her vagina? No, 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 not that MTV. Please don't copyright strike me. Markiplier TV, which leads us into the next chunk of things we can knock out. The Google Player videos and all of the Syndigo sketches. Danger in Fiction, Worst News Doctor, Super Infidelity, Hire My Ass, and the Baby Commercial. Why can we knock those out immediately? Picture this. I'm glad I found you. I, I got a great new idea. Uh, we're gonna make a TV show. A sci-fi drama about the dangers of AI. A horror narrative about breaking the fourth wall. A comedy medical show that honestly has better script writing than some of the things I've seen on fandom. A raunchy superhero series. A game show about getting hired for various jobs. And obviously between these shows they need commercials, just like Ed Edgar's. This means The Host, Dr. E. Plier, The Silver Shepherd, Google Plier, Bim Trimmer, and Ed Edgar are all just characters. Not in the same way Wharfstash and Darkiplier are, no. These are actors playing characters within a fictional story about actors playing characters. Worf and Dark don't care about laws or budget. They just start making shit up. It's complete trash. A disgrace to television, but it allows Worf and more importantly Dark to get behind the scenes. Peering behind the curtain. Working away, toiling, doing whatever they want. It's at this point, definite points in time start to get a little blurry, especially with all three Choose Your Own Adventures dealing with time travel. Here, 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 and everywhere here. But not to worry, tracking the characters instead of the timelines makes it just a little bit easier, and that little bit goes a long way. Let's start with Worf. I am not a merry man! No, not that Worf, sorry. In date, he's just a floating head, but we'll note the fully pink mustache for now, people's knows it might come in handy later. Heist, he's interviewing us, and in space, he teases us and later schedules the interview that I just mentioned. The Worf stash affair and the net affair take place in that order because the events of the net affair rely on Worf doing what he did in the Worf stash affair. Also, the police officer references those events and we'll get back to him later, you horny dog. As for the interviews themselves, The Fall of Slender Man, Five Nights at Freddy's, and Worf stash interviews Markiplier, it's a little bit trickier to determine the order. Interviewing Markiplier, nothing super important of note happens. I mean, obviously Mark is stabbed 14 times and dies, but he's also been stabbed an additional 37 times, poisoned, beaten, strangled, drowned, shot, and hit by a bus, and still managed to get back up, and we'll get to that later. While interviewing 
interviewing Slenderman, or Slendimon, I guess, Worf mentions a few really important things, but the one we need is Markiplier, the world-famous and devilishly handsome YouTuber. Which implies that this interview takes place before the events of Who Killed Markiplier, because his career tanked after her left, after she left, meaning his career was amazing before I used to be somebody. I used to be a star. But if Worf exists during this interview, and it takes place before Who Killed Markiplier, how's that possible? Well, Worf did say famous, not adored. Sure, devilishly handsome, but maybe he's famous for other reasons. We'll take note of that. The FNAF interview, Worf mentions he's making a triumphant return to hard-hitting journalism. Which in real life means it's been a hot minute since Mark did a sketch with Worf Stash, but in universe, Worf has been doing something else. What he's apparently always done. Sick sexual exploits with so many people. <gasps> the affairs! Imagine for a moment, everything happens. Mark dies, Worf does some stuff, Damien becomes Darkiplier, and Worf says, Hey Damien, you wanna make a TV show? Then Markiplier TV, during which he has several hot and steamy affairs with women, but one of them went wrong. Worf killed everyone at the scene, fled the cops, was chased for who knows how long, and eventually killed by a baby. But because of his time in the house, dying doesn't mean the same thing. So he gets back up like nothing happened and decides, you know, maybe I'll just stick to being a reporter. Then he has a massive comeback show, Worf Stash Tonight, where he interviews the head of security for Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, the kid's restaurant that might have been connected to a string of child murders in the 80s, we'll never know. He interviews us, and Slenderman, and most importantly, Markiplier. Something I forgot to mention, it also doesn't necessarily matter the order of events for Worf Stash because, in case you weren't paying attention, saying that Worf Stash has powers is suggesting that he has any control over what he's doing. Worf Stash just kind of slips around through time. He books an interview with you in the past, he's glitching around and most importantly, and yes, I'm aware this is a reference to a murder on the Orient Express, however, consider these lines. How long were we stuck in the snow for? What? Oh, you don't remember? Ah, it's okay, probably hasn't happened yet. Could be a direct reference to Damien, considering it came out after Mother Loving. This one's a little shaky though, because if it's taking place at roughly the same time. You want two people! And why would he remember Damien's story but not know what he's up to? I wonder what he's up to. I also never mentioned the Bonjour Boys. Bonjour! Ah, uh, bonjour! Bonjour. Look here. Bonjour. Raise your arms. And the potential connection between Worf Stash saying it. Oh, for fuck's sake! Hello! Hey, howdy! Greetings, bonjour! But that probably isn't important. Now, let's talk about Mark for a bit. Mark has died. A lot. Stabbed a total of 51 times, shot, poisoned, strangled, beaten, eaten, you get the idea. The house changed him. He's not just a super healer like Deadpool or practically indestructible like Superman. He literally can't die. And I've been hinting to a certain franchise that has another character that just won't die. William Afton. Hang on, I know what this looks like, I swear this isn't another Sansa's Nest situation, please just hear me out. Obviously Mark isn't the secret killer behind the missing children from Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Mark was born in 1989 and all the killings supposedly happened before that. But the constant reinforcement of Five Nights at Freddy's seems more than just a popularity shout out. Plus Mark's constant reinforcement of what we're supposed to be focusing on. Everyone's always debating like what the flower is. It doesn't matter what breed it is. What matters is that it's pink. People worry about what the voices are saying. They're not worried about why you're hearing voices. Mark is credited as Purple Guy during his interview and mentions Five Nights at Freddy's being a big attractor of viewers to his channel. Perhaps the same games created by a rogue indie game developer? Worf also interviews the phone guy, the head of security at Freddy's. Even the police officer from the Ned Affair! See, I told you we'd get back to him. Mentions being at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And speaking of that security guard, he seems to be taking this case personally. This case is important to me. I will not rest until I bring him to the sweet uncurtain showers of justice. And while we're talking about it, he also seems a little overly sexual. I swear I've seen this before. Abe! It makes so much sense! Abe is overly sexual in Who Killed Markiplier and Wilford Mother Love and Worf Stash. He's obsessed over the case for so long it would be redundant to make another hypersexual Worf Stash obsessed police officer, even for Mr. Mark E. Plyer. But if one character can be played by two people, and clearly one person can play multiple characters, Surely there have to be more connections. Let's get the easy ones out of the way. Illinois and Captain Magnum, honestly, might just be completely different people. Worst case scenario, Mark has DID and they're his alters, and I do not have the time or the qualifications to talk about DID, so f*** it, they're randos. Or not canon. Sorry, Illinois fans. You'll notice I didn't mention Yancey because, well, this might be a shock to you, but Yancey and Markiplier are brothers. 
I'll give everyone a second to click off the video because they think I've lost my mind. When you meet Yancey in a heist with Markiplier, during one of the paths, you get this little gem of a line. Oh, you just like my dad. Always criticizing me for my funny accent. Oh, don't talk like that, son. We're from Ohio. This tells us two things. Yancey is from Ohio, and his dad sounded like... That. Now, Agder Mark is obviously a self-insert. Same intro when he introduced himself in Who Killed Mark, same last name as real life and date, which means Agder is also probably from Ohio. But the thing that really sold me is a character you'd probably never guess. Your dad! No, seriously, in the beginning of In Space with Markiplier Part 2, you wake up from a nightmare and your dad, played by Mark, comes in to tell you a story. Now, most people just settle on the fact and agree that this is Stan the Waterman. Even Amy agrees. I'm Stan! Stan! Like, what is this? <laughs> And yeah. Like, oh, this is a character from a GTA video that I made, a one-off. Even in this very script I'm reading, the notes say it's fucking Stan. However, consider that this is your dad. He's played by Markiplier, and he uses the same voice that Yancey used to describe his dad. Oh, don't talk like that, son. We're from Ohio. We haven't had Skywater for a spell. And weirdly enough, this character looks identical to Mark's IRL dad. Yes, I know, of course Mark looks like his dad, but consider this. <laughs> so, they're brothers. Mark and Nancy are brothers, which makes this guy their dad. Of course, not every character is played by Mark. We have recurring actors like Bob and Wade and Pam and Mick and Matt Pat and... Wait a second. Matt Pat's only played two characters. Mac and... the crazy guy. I swear, this character does not have a name other than the Hermit. I have looked all over for a name for this guy. But consider... In space, if you confront Mac about him not being Mark, he freaks out and glitches out of reality. What if Mac glitched back in time, back to Earth even? To make a claim like that, I'd need some solid proof. Hey. Mark's hand sparkles blue like yours does in space. This could change everything. Maybe Bubba and Bob are just Bert in another reality. Maybe Warden Murder Slaughter is just an alternate universe version of Gunther B. Gunnarsson. I thought maybe Slenderman was Abe the Detective all along because of the parallel heroin jokes. Is that where you got addicted to heroin? I, I wanted this escalation oh, okay. of like his different yeah, vices that he had going on before he got down to. So I wanted him just, just about to shoot up some heroin. <laughs> Further clarification, Worf says, No, I remember you were bald or And with the assumption about the cop from the net affair, Just like the worst. That would make Abe the detective, the horny cop, and Slenderman all the same character at vastly different points in time possibly even different realities. I also completely forgot to mention the possibility that the narrator from space... And will Mark ever learn the captain's deep, dark secret? What? What? And the host from Danger and Fiction... It's as if it was right under his nose. God damn it! It's right under your nose! All right! Literally! Okay. It's right there! Got it! might be one and the same, or at least the latter might be a fully fleshed out version of the former. I thought maybe Heist was the kind of big project Mark talked about doing in Date. I used to be somebody. Maybe not something good, but I was somebody who worked on great projects. And it took place before Who Killed Markiplier. Then after Mark's career tanked, he had to scrape together whatever project he could. That's why he was working on Date, but maybe all of Heist is just a subset of different universes Well, everything is glitching because of space. After all, Mark did say... That scene with the chef in Heist, the canon ending? No, really. There was no real canon ending. So maybe it's all meant to lead back to... Crystal on the relic is the same as the one in your palm. 
How else would Doc be able to alter timelines around at will? How else would he be able to take us anywhere we want to go? What else could offer endless possibilities? Just think, why would the relic from Heist be on set during the filming of space? Perhaps some things aren't meant to be known, like Doc's true intentions. Well, if David can provide clues, maybe I can too. Engineer Mark is not actor Mark. But actor Mark might just be Engineer Mark. Everyone just assumed this Engineer Mark went through space, was sent back in time, and eventually became Old Mark. Everyone assumed Doreen had to be Celine because of this note in the locker. Well, it's like my... Like an old friend used to say, life is ours to choose. But if they're old, why are their original actors still there? See if this tracks. A man named Mark grows up in Ohio with his brother Thomas and father Stan Clifton Fishbach. Mark grows up with his friends Damien and William, and while Thomas grew up to be a little more than society could handle and ended up in prison, later changing his name to Yancey, Mark grew up to be an internet sensation. Eventually, he started acting, changed his name to Mark E. Plyer instead of Marky e. Fishbach, which is supported by Wharfstash saying, Oh, look at me! My name is Markiplier now! And starts a hit choose-your-own-adventure film, a heist with Markiplier, even honoring his brother with a character named after him. This probably isn't important, but also Mark is a master at digging with these two lines from Date and Heist. I was a championship digger in my school. I won state. I have a master's degree in digging. I won second place in nationals. In the fame of Hollywood, Mark falls in love with Damien's sister, Celine. They get married, have kids, but William has also fallen in love and convinces Celine to run away together, leaving Mark behind with his fame and riches, but heartbroken. Distraught, Mark attempts to commit suicide, but after waking up in his own decaying body, learns his childhood home, a place he had lived his whole life, is cursed, haunted, possessed. Murder. Mark continues trying to end his own life, constantly winding back up in a void space called the Upside Down, where the house, or what Mark thinks is the house, speaks to him convinces him that he's been wronged, that he's not to blame. He should be happy. The people who wronged him don't deserve to be happy. Mark should do something to make sure that they're never happy again. Mark calls a party for his friends, leading to the events of Who Killed Markiplier, ending with Abe the detective shot and left for dead, William the colonel completely insane, as well as the spirit of Mark in Damien's pristine body, and Damien and Celine to share Mark's cold, broken husk of a corpse. After having spent an eternity in their own minds, Damien and Celine were also affected by the spirit of the house. And once awoken, the birth of potentially the most dangerous character in fiction. Once Abe wakes up, he spends unknown amounts of time tracking down William, now known as Wilford Wharfstash, who is partying his life away. But unknown to either of them, Will is slipping around space and time unchained to any single narrative, appearing and disappearing between the future and the past, teleporting from place to place. During his interrogation, he recognizes a picture of Damien, and afterwards decides to go find him. Worf finds Damien, now Darkiplier, and they decide to make a TV show together, Markiplier TV, named after their long-lost friend. Shows like Worst News Doctor, Google IRL, Hire My Ass, Super Infidelity, Danger in Fiction, and most importantly, Worf Stash Tonight, a talk show featuring Wilford himself as lead anchor and reporter. But Worf Stash gets cocky, sleeping with the wrong people, killing the wrong people, spiraling deeper and downward, dying for the first time, but ultimately changed by the house, he can't die. He continues his reporting career, interviewing the head of security at Freddy Fazbear's, Slenderman, Markiplier, even us. The viewers and Dark, growing sick and tired of Worf's games, sick and tired of waiting, decides to search for an opportunity. Meanwhile, Mark attempts to revive his career with a date with Markiplier, but it's under budget, subpar, rushed, and worst of all, unpopular with viewers. Trying desperately to fill the void in his heart, he starts dating again, and eventually, the world ends in nuclear fire. 
After clawing his way tooth and nail through the dangers of the wasteland, society starts to heal, and Mark attempts to reunite with his long-lost son. Eventually, with the Earth virtually unlivable, humans decide to take to the stars. Mark's son, also named Mark, helps build interstellar ships vastly more advanced than anyone could dream, capable of tearing holes through space and time at will. Mark, now much older, sees these holes in space and time as an opportunity to go back to before everything went wrong. Before the bombs fell, before he died, before the colonel took the love of his life away from him. Sabotaging the ship, Mark inadvertently seals the fate of the universe to doom, and the only way to fix it is to end it. Actor Mark's journey ends, and new Mark's journey begins. However, Darkiplier, finding his opportunity, takes the warp crystal at the end of space. Now able to go back in time, forward in time, between parallel realities, anywhere he wants, he starts toying with the old Mark's life, appearing in his big shows, his small ones, altering timelines, changing history, but perhaps even we aren't meant to know his true intentions. That makes this entire series an intergenerational story. Old Mark is literally Old Mark. The engineer is his son. Celsi would be Doreen slash Celine's daughter. After all, we don't know Damien Celine's last name. Maybe it's Whitaker. Sure, things might be out of order. Maybe there only are two instances. The meta-narrative with who killed Mark, Worf, Stash, and Damien, and space with everything else. All the sketch comedy and choose-your-own-adventures being alternate realities that don't actually add to the story. After all, I still don't know exactly what this line here means. This show provides an explanation for everything that has or will happen in previous stories. There are some doors that this opens backwards in time. Sure, I might have contradicted myself in this very video. Like Pam being in Darkiplier versus Antiseptici and the meta ending in date, I'm also operating under the assumption that Dark is actor's destroyed body, explaining why he's sometimes screaming in agony, even if Mark decanonized it. Plus, it would be great to connect. Oh, not again! With the first time Mark got shot in the chest with a futuristic space gun all the way back in Heist, and the puppet version of the scientist back in space, but I'll leave you with this. If it's not on the screen, if it's not said implicitly, if it's not directed in there, I firmly believe in a story it is not provable. What Mark is essentially saying is, I'm just giving you the pieces. You're the ones trying to make a puzzle. And regardless of that, not everything has a nice tight bow wrapped on it. You don't need to make everything fit to tell a decent story. You, you, you also don't need to have everything fit for people to appreciate a story being told. Not everything has to be perfect. Stories are just that, they're stories. That's all these are, stories. Damn good ones too. And I wouldn't have it any other way. But if you don't like that answer, consider this. Who created Dark? Us. It's been stated plenty of times that Dark wouldn't exist without us, so if we can create him, we can destroy him. That makes him fear us. But how do we make the choice to stop him if he controls the choices? Stop watching? No, we can go deeper. The canon ending for Date reveals that we are Chica. Another ending tells us that Mark has kids. Your kids call. But in Markiplier TV, we see that Amy is a character. That makes Amy canon. So Markiplier was dating Amy the whole time. Amy is Chica. Who else is Chica? Us! Which explains why Dark is scared of Chica and Darkiplier versus Antiseptiki, and Markiplier is only afraid of one thing. No, not mannequins. Amy gets back today. We gotta clean. Oh god. We gotta oh, god. clean, it's a mess! Oh god. The Wrath of Peebles! Amy is the key! Mark's girlfriend is the secret to unlock all of the lo- Thank you a tremendous amount for watching. I was not joking when I said the research for this video took months away from my life. But now it's done, and I'm proud of it. Also, happy birthday, Mark. This should be coming out on your birthday if I got it done on time. Yeah! Please leave a like so I know to make more content like this or give up all my hopes and dreams. And subscribe if you're feeling so inclined. I have so many ideas planned for the future, you don't even want to miss them. And now... <laughs> time to drink some milk. That's all my milk left. This won't go with the outtakes. Also, the police officer references those events and we'll get back to the... <laughs> the police officer. This tells us two things. Yancey is from Ohio and his down... Uh, down? <laughs> and Dark, growing sick and tired of Wharf game, Wharf games? Yeah. <sighs>